But let's close off this episode, shall we? We got uh, teams making the jump in divisions. Let's start with the Division Three team that was in the past NAIA is actually making the jump back into the NAIA ranks. That is Defiance College. There you have the uh, kind of officially, they say officially official. That is their uh, official announcement there. Defiance is joining the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference, the WAC, W-H-A-C, uh, for those of you who are big into acronyms. Let's just say this. That's a tough That's a tough conference. That is a very, very tough conference. And uh, this team, or I shouldn't say this team when it comes to football, but this athletic program had been participating in the NAIA for quite some time. Um, they transitioned to Division Three in 1991. So they've been in D3 for quite a long time now, at least uh, over 20 years, over 30 years, excuse me. And now they're making that move back to the NAIA. So... Uh, scholarship is honestly the biggest, the biggest piece to this, right? Um, for the Yellow Jackets, NAI gets twenty four equivalencies of the school's tuition, which is twenty four more than Division three squads get. So that obviously comes with more of an investment. But they'll be the thirteenth member of the conference, and some of the ones that you probably know of um, when it comes to especially football, like teams like Lawrence Tech. Uh, let's see, you look at uh, Siena Heights. Um, trying to think. Other, uh, well, Concordia, who is going to be unfortunately gone, those kind of squads. Uh, but reduced travel, less missed class time are kind of some cited reasons also for that move. It fits the NAI profile, so to speak, is kind of what they've talked about. And um, that's just kind of the news. That, that's really kind of the news. The tough conference, I'm going to show you guys their schedule for this upcoming season before we move on and talk about a couple other teams here. This is the 24th schedule. Uh, for them, and I mentioned Concordia, this is obviously their last year of uh, a football program operating. That's their opener against Defiance. Then they'll go play St. Francis. You're talking about right off the rip, man. Hey, welcome to NAIA. You're going to play two top 20, potentially top 25 teams in the country right off the rip. That hurts. Uh, Judson, Siena Heights, you got Manchester on there. Then here we go again. St. Xavier, tough one. Rose Ullman, you got Madonna, Taylor. Hanover and then Bluffton to close things out. So they keep a, a D3. I believe Bluffton is D3. That's a D3 opponent on there. But not an easy draw if you are, uh, if you're Defiance in that first year going back to the NAIA. We'll see uh, what happens for them. But excited for the Yellow Jackets and making that move and uh, joining the NAIA ranks. The next squad we'll talk about. Soul Ross State. We have talked about a little bit on this program. They're Division Three. Well, they were until today. Now they're in the Lone Star Conference at the NCAA Division II level. Big time move for, I believe, is the Lobos? I want to say. It is. It is the Lobos. This is a look at their schedule for 24. And the Lone Star Conference, obviously, no slouch. Once again, open up with West Texas A&M. That's going to be a tough one. It is a home game for them. You got Eastern New Mexico, Wayland Baptist, you go, you have, you have Western Oregon at home, which is nice. Then here we go into a little bit of a tough stretch. Got Midwestern State, uh, Western, you got Angelo State, another one against Eastern New Mexico. And you close out the year with the two teams that were in the Lone Star Championship just a year ago at Central Washington and then versus UTPB. Whoo! Going to be tested early and often in this conference. Excited to see what they do. Um, but there was something with this team that I saw on Twitter that I thought you guys, I, I would share with you because I just don't know how I feel about this. Um, this, is a, this is a recruiting deal from them. And you know what? This might be the most Texas recruiting pitch ever. And I love it and hate it at the same time. Looking to get branded? <laughs> that, is the, that is the top sentence. And you've got the recruit photo shoot here, which looks badass, by the way. Great lighting setup and great prop usage here. The SR is flipped, but it's got it literally, for those of you like just listening to this, please pull up YouTube or on Spotify. You can just pull up the video. There is an SR brand in this kid's hand. And the first sentence out of uh, Coach Davis's uh, tweet here is looking to get branded, question mark. I'm not one on here to come burn bridges. I'm not one to pick apart and, and, and make fun of things. So I'm not going to do that. I just... It just felt a little odd and a little different, like looking to get branded. Is that something that we really want to uh, throw into our vocab and uh, kind of like bring into our, our pun intended, our brand and our university and our school here? Not a lot of great things associated with branding and, and, and what that comes from and stems from. So that was a little weird for me, but hey, 
I'm an outside guy. If the guy's in that building and the coach is in that building and the recruits and, and everyone around that university and community, if they buy into it, who gives a shit? That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. At the end of it, he also says Brandom at the end. Brandom. Oh, shit. That's something. That is something. We'll move on from that, though, into uh, potentially the best GIF usage out of uh, any recent tweets that I've seen. Roosevelt, the team that we talked about are these three, probably the most on this program. They become the 11th member of the GLIAC officially today as of July 1st. This is the tweet from Coach Borkhart. Officially official, the Chicago's Division II team is locked in and ready to make waves in the city. <laughs> and it's Sandlot. Jump in the pool, making waves, making a splash. He's the offensive coordinator over there at Roosevelt. And guess what, Coach? You just earned yourself a follow, good sir. That was uh, that was very good uh, GIF usage. I appreciate that. Here is the uh, the little graphic that the GLIAC put out. 11th member of the GLIAC for Roosevelt. We've talked about uh, their schedule. I'll put it up on the screen. We have talked about that earlier, um, so I won't really go through uh, too much in depth, but here is just a look at their schedule as I kind of talk about this move for them. When it comes to their physical location, I mean, you talk about Chicago and the footprint of the GLIAC and where this conference is moving that's big time. Like the GLIAC used to have teams <clears throat> in Illinois, in uh, Ohio, in uh, Indiana, all those other kind of places. Now it's just Michigan, right? It's upper and lower peninsula, but it's just Michigan. So for them to branch back out and extend their footprint out into Chicago, I think is huge for the conference. It's also just great for a conference that has just been admittedly struggling to fill up schedules, which good and bad, right? Good for some teams that want to go out of conference and schedule some big time competition, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for these schools when there's only, what, seven football-playing schools in the conference before Roosevelt's added here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven schools. Yep, okay, I did a little math there, a little counting. Um, but it's tough when you don't have enough member institutions to fill up a schedule. A lot of conferences don't operate like that. So this is a big-time move for uh, for the GLIAC. They were provisional members in 2022, and now it's, uh, it is officially official. They've been in the NAI for 14 seasons and now they've officially made the jump to NCAA Division 2. They got 14 sports too. Football is not the only one. So they're across, you know, all across the board. So there we go. 